Um, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. This is my second Digital Olympus, so there's always a lot of great speakers, and it's really cool that this one was an all-female version, because I love that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use social media to um, get more keyword ideas for your SEO campaigns. So quick 10 seconds about me. Um, I'm Kelsey. I have 10 years experience, which I can't believe. Um, in writing, editing, and search. Um, I'm on most social networks as Wonderwall7, like Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And then, um, like Alex said, I run Story Shout, um, which provides industry news for your website. So we have experienced journalists that will write industry news um, in whatever your niche is and make you a thought leader in that space. And that is a sister company of Moxie.com. Um, I do SEO audits, social media campaigns, and long-form content there with my team. So today we're going to cover um, a bunch of tools that I use in order to get better keyword research ideas for SEO campaigns for my clients. So um, Instagram, how to search for hashtags that are going to give you ideas, uh, social media trends, looking at that to develop some more ideas in terms of a keyword list, and then looking at your competitors and learning from them. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was Instagram autocomplete, because when I figured this out, and I was asking a lot of my um, you know, colleagues in the space if they had heard about it, they had no idea, and they thought it was really cool. So I wanted to be sure to share it with you guys today. So they basically have their own auto suggestion search engine. So as you're typing hashtags in Instagram, it shows you how many posts for each hashtag. And the reason why this is so cool and useful for search specifically is because it's going to show you trends in your audience's language and how they talk. And so a lot of times when I think, you know, my client's target audience um, uses specific terms or phrases, when I use these tools in a specific um, specifically this Instagram feature, a lot of times uh, things will pop up that are more popular than what I thought they would be. So it's just a really good way to get a, a view of how your target audience is actually using uh, terms in your industry. So here's an example, a screenshot from Instagram. I was posting um, an image of my dachshund and my husband's head because they have the same color hair. And so I just started typing dogs. And as I was typing it, um, that hashtag, you can see it auto-populated um, a couple ideas. And so as you keep typing, it, more ideas will show up, and you can scroll through these on the application. But, of course, uh, dogs has over 20 million posts, which makes sense. Um, Dogstagram is really popular. Um, I wouldn't use that, obviously, because that's Instagram-specific. But I also was interested to point out, it doesn't show in this screenshot, but uh, the word dog was actually more popular than dogs. So if I was working on this for a client, you know, maybe if my client sold high-end dog leashes, I would do more research on whether or not users are actually searching dog or the plural of dogs. So this is a perfect example of how um, finding out that the key, that the hashtag dog is more popular than dogs could actually lead to a better optimized SEO campaign. Um, if you don't want to use the Instagram app and just kind of want to get some keyword um, ideas from hashtags on Instagram, this is a free, free tool. It's kind of hard to remember the URL, but it's iqta.gs. And so you basically just put in your keyword and it's going to give you uh, related hashtags that people use. So when they're using SEO as a hashtag on Instagram, they're also likely to use these hashtags as well. So this is a great um, either. Uh, backbone when it comes to building a keyword list for an SEO campaign or just something to help build it out. So maybe if I was doing a campaign for my own agency, Moxiedot, you know, there's a few things on here that I wouldn't have thought of as keywords to go after, such as uh, responsive websites or advertising agencies. Whoop, sorry about that. I was trying to get that out of my way. There we go. Um, so moving on to hashtag search tools. So Obviously, throughout several social media platforms besides just Instagram, there are a lot of um, hashtags that people use on Twitter and even Facebook. And so I'm going to go over a couple tools that I use that help me not only with um, social media campaigns for clients, but then also building out those keyword lists for them as well when it comes to SEO. 
So uh, one of the most popular that you guys have probably heard of is hashtagify.com. So it's free. Um, I They might have a paid option. The design isn't the best of the site. So, you know, I urge you guys, especially if you're in web design, to look past the terrible design. But what it does basically is it looks at the top 10 related hashtags to the one you enter. So um, going along with this example of SEO, um, it shows it showed me the top 10. And then when you mouse over it, it shows you the correlation. So what percentage of tweets were sent um, using both the hashtag SEO and marketing in this example, um, over 11%. So you can mouse over all of these circles in the results and look at the correlation of when people used both those hashtags. And that's a good way to get more ideas in terms of building out your keyword list. So um, looking at this, um, if marketing was the highest correlated with SEO, then I would think about, well, are there some long tail phrases that combine both SEO and marketing that I need to be adding in my search campaigns for Moxidot? And so it's kind of a good way to brainstorm uh, long tail phrases. Cool tool is hashtags.org. Um, they're a little bit better in the design department, probably because they have a paid option. So as you can see in these results, they don't show me the top results. Um, they asked me to upgrade. But there was a couple of really interesting results that I hadn't thought of at all before, um, specifically growth hacking. I mean, that's a common term in our industry. But I, I, for some reason, when I was doing this research, I hadn't even thought of it for um, using it with SEO. So as a result, you know, I could combine maybe a campaign or a content page that mentions growth hacking, even if that's not necessarily what I offer, um, just including it and saying, hey, you know, when you think about growth hacking, you might think about X, Y, Z. Um, here's specifically what we offer and here's how we could solve the problem you're actually looking for a solution for. So uh, besides hashtags, I like looking at trends on Facebook and Twitter, especially with the Facebook open graph search. That gives you tons of access to uh, people's pro uh, profiles and posts that you didn't get even a few years ago. So um, one thing that I like to look at just as a very, very high level overall view of what people are posting um, on social media is Tagboard. So they have a free version and a paid version as well. And the reason why this one's so great is that it allows you to look at posts for several different platforms at once. So it lets you look at Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Tumblr, um, and then I think a couple others like Flickr. And so, this is very helpful for your campaigns when it comes to search it, because it's showing you what your actual target audience is really posting about and talking about, and it's giving that to you all at once on one screen. And so if we look back at the dog example, um, I can see you know, just in this screenshot, there's a couple of a video, which might lead to some more ideas for an SEO campaign, and then a photo of a woman with her dog. So maybe I need to develop my keyword strategy for my tail website um, into the relationship between owners and their dogs, for example. So just kind of using it as brainstorm, both for content and also how people are talking about your top search terms. So I like using Facebook search to kind of get a higher level at the behaviors of my target audience when it comes to SEO campaigns. So in this example, I just searched marketing, not a keyword, uh, or not, sorry, not a hashtag, just the word marketing. And I can narrow it down to my friends, my groups, and then also location and years. So I can look at trends over the years. Maybe people talked about, um, I don't know, growth hacking a lot in 2015, but then if I looked in 2016, it went down a lot. That's telling me that, hey, maybe growth hacking isn't something I want to optimize for in the future. Um, it also is helpful if you're very active on specific groups, if you want to see what they're talking about. So maybe, you know, you're in a lot of groups that your target audience is also in. You can kind of see the top terms that they're using, um, using this open graph on Facebook and develop your keyword strategy and lists accordingly.
also really great for that. Um, it also search, so shows you uh, related searches for your term. So again, I just put in marketing, um, not as a hashtag, and it's giving me related searches, which is basically what Google gives you, um, well, not Google, but the the uh, platforms like SEMrush and search metrics um, that they give uh, and how Google kind of ties it all in together. Twitter is giving that information to you for free. So they're saying, hey, a lot of people that tweet or search for marketing are also searching for advertising and social media. So if I'm um, building out a keyword list based on marketing, I'll want to have um, long tail phrases that relate to advertising and social media if those are things that I offer. And uh, Twitter is also really great for searching by location as well. So if you're a local business um, or if you're an e-commerce website that only specializes in local products, um, Twitter search is really cool for that because there aren't as many uh, privacy restrictions as there are on Facebook. And then uh, finally, I wanted to touch on competitor monitoring. So. Um, you know, obviously in SEO, it's really common to look at your competitors and see what they're doing. But I like looking at how they are talking about your industry and what they offer on social media specifically. So one way that I um, have done this for clients, and I can't show a client example, so I'm just showing this example, is I'll build a Twitter list of competitors in the space. And so... Um, just as this example, this isn't for a, a client, but I built a public Twitter list of amazing women in marketing. And so um, it's going to let me, once you build this, you can look at all the members in your list. You can look at their tweets all at once in a view. So in this example of the screenshot um, on the left, I would click on tweets and that's going to show me the tweets of all the members that are in my list and that's going to give you a good overview of how competitors are talking about your space um, maybe they keep mentioning a keyword or a phrase that you hadn't touched on before for example um, i will say as a word of caution um, for twitter lists is if you add someone to a twitter list they're going to see that you added them um, especially if it's public. And so you want to make sure that your Twitter list isn't called competitors or people to beat or, you know, something that would be, um, you know, not professional to them. And so as an example, um, you can look on your own Twitter profile of a list that you've been added to. You just go to list in your profile and then member of. And so these are actually lists of from other people that have added my personal Twitter profile um, to their list. And as you can see, you know, there's nothing that's not professional on here, but um, it's just an example of what people can view when it comes to whether or not you add them on Twitter, on a Twitter list. So that's it for my quickie presentation. Um, if you guys have any questions or want help with anything, my email is kelsey at moxie.com. And then again, I'm on Twitter at wonderwall7. So thank you for your time. Thank